What's going on, guys? It's Taryn, uh, and I'm here to talk to you about ghost mushrooms. So, as we know, in about uh, about a couple days, ghost mushrooms are going to start uh, being very important. The Warlock class mount should hopefully be out with Darmal, and I am here to tell you about a way to farm ghost mushrooms while doing your normal stuff to keep making gold. So. A lot of us kind of know about the Meriden farm. If you haven't heard about that, go find XN from Apes. He does some full mongoloid stuff doing S uh, Meriden farm. Stay safe has put out a video about it. We're going to take that. We're going to do something a little differently with it. Uh, we're going to go into Orange Side. And uh, we're going to go there to click on mushrooms and collect mushrooms. So... I am uh, I'm doing this. You can get on average uh, three to four mushrooms from Orange Side. It takes about six minutes at most to do that run, and then you can do another one to two on uh, after the waterfall, and you can reset. Why are ghost mushrooms so important? Uh, ghost mushrooms are used to create shadow pots. The um, the uh, shadow elixirs that you need for both your mount and just uh, to pump during raids. They're also pretty helpful for that. Uh, so the problem is, is ghost mushrooms are basically unfarmable in the open world. There's about four, only three locations where you can get them outside of Meriden, which is uh, Skull Rock in Hinterlands. There's like two spots in Hinterlands. And then there's actually just a couple spots here inside of Meriden where I'm picking right now. So this is not one of the ones that we uh, normally look out for, but it's just one that on your way in, you might find now and again. We're not we're not here to find those. So a uh, couple things about farming. Um, number one, you will, uh, we're gonna speed this up just a little bit. Um, find that whatever all right uh, a couple things about farming this so number one um, you can only do five be into five instances an hour okay after five instances in an hour uh, if you try and do a reset or anything like that you'll get kicked out to your hearthstone location right so uh, as you see I'm doing this I've got a friend of mine in uh, my party here he'll handle doing resets for me and all that stuff um, and we'll be good. So our goal here is because you can only do so many instances an hour, you um, want to make sure your runs are going to be over 12 minutes. So how do we do that with this? Because picking flowers normally pretty quick. Uh, we're going to also kill Princess and we're going to kill uh, the Goblin boss here. Uh, and that will easily take us over and it'll net us pretty good money over time. So as you can see here, I'm zoning in. I'm going to go ahead and soul stone myself because shit happens and it's awful. Uh, obviously you want to run all your buffs. Um, I run, when I'm doing this, I run the SL sack um, just because it just ends up being a little easier having siphon life. If you're just normal sack um, for raids, that should honestly work fine. Uh, the goblin might be a little interesting, but you'll be fine. Um, you'll just have to make sure you'll probably have to use a hellstone every time for the goblin, but not a big deal. Um, so we're going to start off here. I'm going to do this little skip, and I'm going to kill only two mobs other than the goblin and princess here. And that's these two slimes right here. The reason why is there is oftentimes a mushroom in this little corner right here, and so you have to go this way. Uh, this path is also just tends to be easier than the other slimes on the side. So I kill these slimes, just basic dot them up, kill them, move on. Um, I have done some experiments kind of going around here. I tend to aggro these slimes here or something, and it's just a pain. These slimes tick, have an AoE tick. Uh, that's really annoying. So I just tend to avoid that uh, and just kill them um, to avoid dealing with that. So... Uh, I'm going to goof here and not kill this one immediately. He's going to want me for a second. So, ghost mushrooms. So the thing about ghost mushrooms in this instance, there are about 10 to 15 different spots. There are, on average, three or four total spawns um, when you do one of these on the orange side. 
A minimum of three. I have never not seen three. I have seen up to five. Uh, on average, though, normally I see only three. Um, and then after the waterfall, I'll see one, sometimes a second one, but always at least one. So you get a minimum of four. Normally you get four to five. Sometimes you get a sixth one. And there's that. So this is the, the first mushroom that I get here. Uh, this little guy will spit out a little um, a little grub. Uh, you just ignore that. It's one of the little fast ones. Now, what you'll notice is when you're doing this, you're going to be able to almost touch things before they aggro. Um, and if you do this first couple times, there's a couple packs here that I'll show you that are um, they're a little close and basically the trick to those is you just got to kind of wall jump not like wall jump but you're going to jump as close to the wall so you're kind of jumping over uh, you'll have a wall that kind of sticks out and you'll kind of clear the corner of the wall here kind of like what i do there so um this little larva uh he runs about as fast as you do i have movement speed speed to boot so it, i move a little bit faster but it's fine. Uh, you will oftentimes get a ghost mushroom back behind this pack. Um, it looks hairy. It looks like you won't be able to get it, but you will be able to get that mushroom. So, okay. Uh, there's a dried pack that we just passed. Those t will sometimes, you'll have to squeak around those um, next to that flower pack that I just showed you. Uh, note about this area right here. I have never seen a mushroom in this little corner here. Don't even bother going into there. So... Um, you're going to come up and right up in here, I don't see one here, but this little spot right here, you will see a mushroom now and again. Um, and that one feels really weird to get to. So this is one of the first scary packs, the first couple times you do this. Um, the reason why is because this lasher right here will sometimes sit right next to um, this little wall. Uh, you want to wait until this lasher is kind of more to the left. And when you do this, you want to kind of jump along this wall like I do there. So uh, when you get this mushroom, um, when you get this mushroom, uh, let's see, yeah, you, you, it'll pop like right here and you can stand right on the edge. Even if the, the that little flower guy is, is like on top of the mushroom, you can still click it. So run under this little pillar right here. Uh, and here's where I see my second mushroom. So always come around here to check for this pop right here. Now. Um, I want to talk about this guy for a second. Don't try and fight him. He has a stacking bleed, and you are going to be in for a very bad time because once that bleed hits about 10, uh, you're not going to kill him. Uh, you're, you, we will probably need significantly more gear before you can solo him. I can see that being able to solo him once we hit BWL level gear, but right now, uh -uh, don't even try it. So... Uh, skip around that pack, skip around these lashers, um, these guys, no, not those guys. Um, occasionally, you will have another one in here. You can kind of skirt around those mushroom, or those little flower packs back there and get one. Now, I have discovered, uh, I used to jump down here and just continue on my path, um, but the problem with that is sometimes you will get a mush uh, mushroom, so you'll get one up here. Uh, this guy's pretty easy to get. You just jump right here, uh, and you can kind of wall walk along that ledge back there and get that just fine. And I'll show it here. This mushroom isn't here, but this mushroom is impossible to get if you jump back down. So, um, yeah. So there will be a mushroom that will spawn right here, and it is impossible to make your way back around to grab it if you jump down. So always come to this ledge and jump down just in case this guy's here. Uh, it's like two gold that you're missing out on. So, all right, we're going to jump, and we're going to keep going. Um, I have seen a mushroom in this little corner. I've seen one or two up in here, and then there's that one on that ledge that I talked to you about. Uh, I have seen one right in this area. They're always close to a mob. They're never, like, directly by themselves, so that's something to keep in mind. You're always kind of hugging along things. Now, I have not actually tried to fight these oozes. It might be worth to try that out at some point um, to see if they move as slow as some of the other ones. I don't remember if they do, honestly. It's been a long time since I've actually done this instance uh, normally. So, all right, so this is my last mushroom that I see on this line here. This is the last spot that you'll find one. And this will be my third mushroom for this run. Um, so grab that you can just kind of come right up next to it 
let's see, we're we're fine. We're 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 getting close, but we're fine. So that's mushroom number three, uh, and then I'm gonna head back head out to the waterfall now. Um, <clears throat> the way I time this, honestly, like a lot of people will run stopwatches is I just watch my buff timer. So my buffs just tick to 24 minutes, which means we have gone through only five minutes to get to the waterfall. It'll take me just at six minutes to get to the waterfall, sometimes six minutes, 30 seconds, if I have to backtrack a little bit to get a mushroom, but you know, uh, it's pretty consistent. So from here, uh, we're going to go do princess and then goblin. Uh, the reason why is because there are typically mushrooms at the very bottom of this area, and I'll kind of go over how that works in a minute. Um, and there's also one at the very top where the um, where the rock boss is. Uh, there will be one that'll spawn up there on occasion, and that one's. Um, I honestly haven't attempted. I haven't seen it since I realized that's where it was. Um, so I will look, uh, it may be worth to checking on that, but every single mushroom in this instance is grabbable. It is impossible to, it, it, every single mushroom you can grab. Uh, it looks like it's impossible, but it's not. So uh, I am over here checking for a blind weed, uh, but then I'm gonna go ahead and ignore this blind weed all the way over there. Uh, the thing about blind weed is it kind of sells for garbage because it's everywhere. So I don't honestly, actively go for it. I have about a stack. I have about as many blind weed in my bags as I have ghost mushrooms. Blind weed is uh, on my server about 16 gold uh, or 16 silver per. So not all that great, not all that useful. So uh, if you see a mushroom pop up here, that is where the rock boss is. So we wait on that. There's one ghost mushroom right down there. That's on the first floor, but we'll show that in a minute. Wait for these packs, this guy to pat. Uh, come around here. It looks like you'll aggro these. You won't. It's fine. It's all fine. Um, and yeah, so now we're going to go straight to Princess. Now, uh, a couple notes about Ghost Mushrooms. So, um, Ghost Mushrooms right now on my server are about uh, f 1 gold 60 silver a stack. I have seen them for uh, at this about a week ago. They were 120, and then they had um, the announcement for BlizzCon. Uh, just as a side note, you'll see this is there should be a mushroom down here. It's actually like two floors below, so we'll go to that in a minute. Uh, ghost mushrooms are rising rapidly, and they are probably going to have. Um, they're probably going to jump to about two gold per on my server. Uh, depending uh, depending on how populated your server is, that'll in, uh, dictate some things. The thing about ghost mushrooms is they are not capped uh, by the external server. They are capped really by people farming them like this. So they'll fluctuate as people kind of figure this out. Um, and as the demand for them goes up and down. So um, right now, shadow pots, are the elixir of shadow power or whatever it is, they sell for about Four gold 80 silver which is right at threefold um, and uh, those are gonna go up I would guess that you'll see those for two and six gold each um, starting next week so this is pretty lucrative now uh, what you're about to see is um, in the uh, in the industry what we'd like to call bullshit so this is how you kill princess uh, this is the easy way to kill Princess. Yeah, you can kite her around here and you're dealing with a bunch of stuff. Uh, instead, you can hump this pillar and you can abuse pathing. So there are two spots where you can abuse this. I'm going to show both. Um, pathing gets all fucky as mobs have to go in and out of water. And they will prefer to approach you. For some reason, there's something with pathing that says... This path is shorter than than this path, or than the, it's it's weird. It's weird. I don't I don't quite understand why it's a thing, but um, it is a thing. So ah, uh, uh, this is what you do. So you go ahead and you just keep a couple of dots up and keep doom up. You'll take two dooms plus two agonies duration. So it's about two and a half minutes. 
uh, and you're just going to pillar hump the entire time. Um, and if she gets too close, you hop to the other side of the pillar and you basically bounce back and forth between this hill and the water. And you just keep her moving back and forth up here. Uh, so you can see here, she got a little close. So we're going to, oh, there we go. This is the easier spot to bounce her, I have found, um, because it takes her, she's got more movement that she has to do uh, to come around here. So this is the easier spot to bounce her around. And this is what you do to kill her. Uh, so she drops the ring. You can sell runs for the ring. Um, I don't recommend doing ring runs uh, for when you're doing this, but um, you can do that. Yeah, you see, she kind of gets all gets all weird when she comes over here. So you just you know try and just yoink her around. As you do this more, you'll get used to the how the pathing works. Um, when I do this, I have Amplify Curse, so this will make my uh, next Agony nice and good. I go ahead and cue that up because my number arrows to move me around, or not arrows, but my Q WASD keys um, are the same keys I use for Corruption and everything, so I kind of cue, cue things up. Once she hits 20%, she slows down drastically, and you don't have to, you're not in danger anymore. You don't have to do this little pillar humping. Um... And then you're good to go. So there you go. She's going to tick to 20 right here. And she slows. You can see it. She slows down drastically. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and wait. Re-agony. And after she chucks that boulder. And then I'm going to actually just run her. So uh, these two bosses are the only things that you can use. Hello, kiddo. These two bosses are the only thing that you can get shards from. So it's very important for these two bosses that you do that. Um, you're only killing about three to three and a half of these an hour, six shards. Um, if you have to uh, use your uh, hellstone every time and everything, it's important. So that is the worst drop that you can get from her. It's about a gold uh, to vendor. That is really good for sharding. Um, I have found that most greens in this you send to a disenchant alt and they that is more, on average, it seems, than trying to just sell it to a vendor, which is what you do a lot of times. So now we're going to go to the goblin. Um, so run, skip these next couple of guys, jump into this water. You got to watch for the crocolisk. Um, normally, the timing kind of works out. When I do this, the crocolisk is either um, back there or he's like right here, and you can avoid that. So he is coming this way, so I have to go and skirt around this way to get in uh and we'll be good so princess will drop uh one to two sometimes she'll drop two items typically it will be an item and sometimes she will drop the ring the ring's about like a 10 percent drop it seems um the the fabled attack ring um and then her other item uh she drops like a dagger she drops a helm she drops some other stuff um so uh those are all those all sell for a little bit. The dagger's obviously the best one, and then you get bonus gold for the ring. Um, she also drops an epic dagger. I have never seen it. I have one guildie that has seen it once, and he's done this place like a hundred times now. Well over a hundred times. Not actually a hundred times, but he's done this place a lot. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so now we're kind of coming up the bottom. So now we're gonna look for ghost mushrooms. So there is typically a spawn right here. There's a blind wait here. I'm gonna kind of come around because I'm also chatting with this guy. Um, but normally I don't go out of my way for this blind blind weed, honestly. So we're gonna grab that and then we're gonna run up the path to the goblin. Um, there are typically two to three, or there's about three, three or four places where ghost mushrooms can spawn on the way up. Um, and they're pretty good. So uh, we'll go ahead and do that. Um, so like I said, there's one typically back there, sometimes down there. There might be one up here. Uh, I have seen one back in this corner. And I think sometimes right there. So we're going to go ahead and run past. We're going to cross over this bridge here, and we'll keep going. Um, Goblin will sell stuff for about... Uh, his stuff drops for between it sells vendors for about one to three gold so if you're killing these if you can pull off four in an hour that's cutting it close right now I am at 19 minutes um, goblin takes about another minute and a half so you can do these in about one about four an hour which is pretty good you're you're sitting safe 
from instance cap at that point. Um, so, all right, so we're gonna come up on this ghost mushroom here. This is one of the spawns. So this will be my fourth ghost mushroom for the instance. Um, but yeah, you can do these at about, yes, I hear you, goodness, I'm trying to record. All right, you can see these, you see, uh, like I said, about four, four or five. Five is not uncommon, four is pretty common, and I have seen six in one run. So uh, you'll come around here and you kill this goblin. Goblin sits right at the edge of this bubble here, and you'll just kind of float around this. It won't take more than one loop. He doesn't have a lot of hit points, so. Um, should only take you about one doom tick, or one doom tick plus, uh, plus like the extra agony damage. So um, just kite this guy around, and you'll be set. So what you're kind of looking at here is uh, about, on average, two gold from this goblin. On average, two-ish gold from Princess. Four Ghost Mushrooms. Ghost Mushrooms right now, depending on your server and various other crap, are between one and a quarter to two gold per. Call it 150. Uh, so that's six gold. And then another five gold from these guys. You can do four a run. This still sits you at 40 gold an hour. Easily easily 40 gold an hour and i would argue that this is a lot easier than doing some of the real true mongoloid shit that xn does with pulling 12 giants at once um it's fun don't get me wrong um and it's a good way to to build up some shards and stuff on the side while you're doing all this stuff but at the end of the day i find i've found this a lot easier a lot more chill um the only disadvantage of this is it's very hard to sell rings to either lobies or, or other people in general. So um, so this guy should die here in just a second. Obviously, do obvious things, avoid the bombs, don't let him just shoot you over and over again, uh, and make sure you drain, and you'll kill him. Okay, cool. So after this point, there are one or two more ghost mushrooms up here. Go ahead and loot that, and there's one or two more ghost mushrooms here um and that's basically it so i have 12 minutes left on my buff 18 minutes total for this whole run that's not bad you can do almost four of these an hour um and you'll maintain you won't ever have to stop or anything like that doing it this way um i have found on occasion i will skip princess if i see like two ghost mushrooms, right? one right here and one right here, I know that, oh, this is guaranteed ghost mushrooms and I'm just gonna bail because I know I've already got my ghost mushrooms and I can just do an instance. Um, don't do that too often or you will instance cap yourself. So, um, but yeah, this is just a helpful thing. Hope you guys can make some money off this and get your epic mounts. Um, I hope to start making some more of these types of guides over the next uh, couple months and until next time, bye.